Okay, this week's episode, today's episode, which was another fantastic episode, if no other reason that we got so much win, literally. Because I was like, I'm thinking about this, like one of the big focal points of season one, and to a lesser extent this season, and that was that Kara and Wynn were best friends. And as you know, I'm going over the series in my head, you know, I've rewatched some of the first season, I haven't gotten through all of it yet, but, um, we don't see a lot of them together, especially in this season, you know, that Wynn's doing his own thing, and Supergirl's, you know, doing her thing. But whenever you see them together, you do believe that they are best friends. Um, Jeremy Jordan and Melissa Pinoise just play off each other. I don't know if they really are friends and have known each other for a long time, but yeah, the scene at the end of this where they are um, setting up the crossover, again, just I had no problem believing that they knew each other uh, for a long time and that they were, you know, cared a lot about each other. And I really loved Wynn's moment where you know, he doesn't know this story, but he's basically saying, of course I forgive her. She, she lied, but it was for a good reason. And you know, that's the type of person you say. I just love how it applied. And you saw the wheels in Kara's head turning. And, you know, then he got all, I don't know if I would go far to say he's snarky. But, you know, he got very, you know, all, it's the way me and my friends interact a lot. So, that was, that was really well done. And, it just, and again... We need to see Wynn interact more with everybody, because we got to see him pretty much interact with for a full scene with Maggie in this episode, and that was great. We got more of him with Alex, which is, again is something I just didn't know I needed in my life until this season. So yeah, give Wynn a spin-off at this point. I mean, he was already one of my favorite characters, but I just this episode was such a delight in that regard. It really it was really a lot of fun. I really like Lyra, and I really like that she's still going to be around, and that she wasn't com a completely evil rhymes with which person. I was, you know, ruminating on some of the scenes, like, during the commercial break, and it just made me wonder if this was always the plan with her, because that scene in the dinner of her first appearance, she just seemed genuinely nervous, but that would play into the con. That would work for her. Maybe it was the first inkling she had, maybe I shouldn't do that to this poor guy because he seems like genuinely nice. I mean, for all we know, the other two guys were D-bags. But, you know, again, like she said, it's called the long game for a reason. It's really good. You know, I, I really like Lyra. I mean, um, like last week, I liked that scene well, two weeks ago. Again, I had no excuse for missing or for having to record two of these in one day. But, where they're, you know, sitting together and they're just talking all the nerd stuff and Jimmy makes this thing comment about how not only does she speak English, she speaks when, you know. You know, the actors play off each other really well. I like the She-Hulk reference, you know, with the um subtitles going on with the CW app. You know, my roommate's like, well, She-Hulk should have been capitalized. I don't think it did would have been necessary because she said she's a She-Hulk, you know, instead of just saying a Hulk. Which is sort of interesting, but not on topic. And, you know, once they capitalize it, it becomes a proper name. And, yeah, that, that might have been legal issues. But I, I appreciate the reference. I really feel like um, Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk, or just the Hulk as she is now. She's a really underrated character. I'm really hoping she gets, like, a Netflix series at some point. But, you know, that, like I said, that's not on topic. The Kara Monel stuff. You know, um, my, we were making some sarcastic remarks about, oh, the twist, such a big twist that he was really the prince. I don't think it was supposed to be a big twist. I just think it was supposed to be a liar reveal moment. But it worked. And, you know, Kara's reasons for, you know, not understanding, not... Trusting him anymore, you know, I tried to stop there for a second, I'm sorry. You know, and I'm only just now realizing that scene in the beginning, where you're on the couch and they're being all lovey-dovey and, like, you know, rom-com levels of cheesy. 
Oh, I really should have seen that coming, because, you know, that's the classic thing. Oh, these characters are so happy together. I wonder what's going to happen. No, I was just too caught up in the um, sappiness of the scene, I guess, because, you know, I mentioned a couple of videos back that I'm actually seeing someone right now, and I'm not going to lie, that scene reminded me of us. <laughs> so, you know, I dug it. Um... Yeah, okay, um, it was really cool to see Kevin Sorbo back, um, I, I, I was, I was a, like, I'm, I'm just gonna say normal fan of Hercules and Legendary Journeys as a kid, I didn't, like, never got to watch it consistently, I think it kept getting moved around, you know, I really enjoyed it, he's very charming in that, you know, he's basically playing a Superman there, you know, and yeah, some, you know, social media being a thing, we get to learn more about how our celebrities feel about certain things. Yeah. There's a expression from actually one of my Pathfinder books. It's called Love the Meal But Hate the Cook. Or vice versa. You know, hate the cook but love the meal. And it's basically saying you can appreciate someone's work and still not like the person. Kevin Sorbo, I want to like you because you're just such a charming actor. I loved you as a kid. I loved you in this episode. Uh, yeah. And I hate, I hate sick of it. Just, you know, I was surprised he was um willing to play that particular role. Because, you know, again, things being relevant, we got the make Daxum great again, and then Daxum was never great. Then again, this is something where I am going to, like, stick up for mon -El because we really have seen him change throughout the season, and now we know why. Like, he... You know, abandoning everyone was terrible, but... One, I could just buy, like, his survival instinct was at high gear. He's used to listening to the guard. You know, self-preservation is a, is a very powerful thing, you know. Ask anyone who has depression doesn't want to be around <laughs> anymore. That was dark. Um. So, yeah, and I could just believe that seeing all these people screaming, you know, please don't leave me, watching his attendant or whatever kill the Kryptonian emissary who had the like the symbol of L. So I'm like, is that another cousin? Was an uncle? I mean, yeah, that, that, that was brutal. And you could see, well, you could see he's conflicted. Like, oh my God, this is a terrible thing. What do I do? He's being told to save his life. The adrenaline's going. Self-preservation is kicked in. So yeah, if I didn't like Monel before, I think I really would have basically fallen for him in this episode. He's just a, I believe he's trying to atone. He wants to atone. He knows he's been a terrible person and he wants to fix it. Which again, you know, Chris Wood knocked it out of the park and yeah, the Kara breaking up with him broke my heart a little. I mean, I was just so happy to see her happy. But at the same time, I can't fault her, especially when he said he didn't know if he would have ever told her the truth. So this is one of those things where I'm sad, but it's a natural flow of things. Like, you know, the end of Flash Season 3, where Barry messes everything up again, but while you're mad at the character, you're not mad at the show. So I'm sad about Kara and mon -El. I'm not faulting either of them. You know, it's because that just seems like the natural course things would take. Though I'm wondering, considering what this episode set up, if I might possibly get some hints of my one true <laughs> ship. Because, <laughs> you know, Kara just broke up with mon -El, and over in Flash, Barry and Iris are on a break, and I'm just... Give me something! <laughs> Because I, I know it can never happen for all sorts of reasons. I accept that. But those two are just so perfect together. And oh my god, what? 
Why do I care so much about this? I am not a shipper. Oh. But yeah, this, this was a great episode. It wasn't as emotionally heavy as the last two, which which is a good thing, because uh, you know, I think we needed a little bit of a lighter mood. You know, we have the typical trope of, oh, this world-famous art piece just happens to be in this museum in this fictional city instead of where it would be normally. <laughs> um, also, this was actually a really fun Guardian moment is... um. You know, when he tries to swoop in and rescue Wynn, he's like, oh, try breaking through titanium alloy, because I'm Batman, I'm your guardian. And, you know, when he kicks in, nothing happens. He's like, huh, that usually works. Run. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that, that got a laugh out of me. Um, it was good to see James again, or Jimmy, or whatever. So he's not a bad character, definitely not a bad actor. It's just, I'm really, this is like, he's like my main argument for CB, CBS interference. Because they just don't know what to do with him, and he's barely in the episodes anymore. Which, you know, would suck. I would actually feel really bad if they wrote him out of the show, because, you know, I like him. I like his interactions with the rest of the cast. Oh, we had good Maggie... I keep wanting to say Maggie Sawyer moments, but that's the character's name, not the name of the pairing or anything. Uh, but uh, Maggie and Alex moments, you know, especially at the end where it's like, when, you know, gets scared off. He's like, oh, why scare him? No, no, I'm almost as good as you. I mean, those two are adorable. Yeah, don't don't dare break them up, okay? You know, you can take away my caramel. You will never give me my Bara or Carrie or whatever. Do not break up Maggie and Alex. I want that actress to be a regular. I want them to be married. I want them happily ever after. God damn it. Does that count as shipping? Because my understanding of shipping is you want the characters to get together. You want them to be a pairing when they're not. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know how this works. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, I'm actually a little bit glad that I'm going over my 10-minute roll this time because it'll make it easier to tell these episodes apart once I try to upload them. But yeah, real, really solid episode. Again, the season's been knocking them out of the park. Um, I know because social media and whatnot that we haven't seen the last of The King and Queen of Daxum, because if no other reason, Kevin Smith is directing any other episode, something I'm really excited about, and he's mentioned how he's directing Kevin Sorbo, Terry Hatcher, and Linda Carta. Carter, the president's gonna be back. I wonder if he's gonna get the season finale, because those were a lot of, you know, fairly important characters. <laughs> You know, which I'd be fine with, because, you know, his Flash episodes have been great, and the Supergirl episode was really good, too. I just didn't think it had the same emotional weight as his Flash episodes do. I'm actually thinking that's going to change. But, yeah, solid episode. Really just, you know, everything worked, and I'm excited to see how things are going to resolve next week. And, um... Planning on to do another, you know, two for video with my roommate about the crossover, but you know, he, he has vocal problems, so that one might be late, but, you know, that's nothing new. Uh, but yeah, really great episode, very happy, just repeating myself at this point, so hopefully see you guys next week.